Ever thought of Quaker Oats and immediately pictured the steaming bowl of oatmeal? Well, you're not alone. But hold on to your breakfast spoons because there's more to this iconic brand than meets the eye. Quaker Oats, a former Fortune 500 giant, raked in over $5 billion annually in the 1990s, and most of it had nothing to do with oatmeal. In a surprising turn of events in December 2000, after a century of solo ventures, Quaker Oats announced a whopping $13 billion stock deal with Pepsi. Now, the burning question is, what made this cereal powerhouse worth such a staggering amount? Stay tuned as we unravel the unexpected layers of Quaker Oats in this video adventure. Explore untold stories of iconic brands and personalities at the Bullish Society. Uncover forgotten archives, secrets, and narratives that shape our world. Meet visionaries, voices of change, and immerse yourself in defining stories. Subscribe now and join our community of storytellers. Don't miss the tales behind every success and failure. Let's begin with the most apparent, consumer foods. Quaker Oats has long been a stalwart provider of major brands found in your local supermarket. The roots of this culinary giant trace back to the 1800s when oats gained popularity in America, initially reserved for horses. The affordability of oats prompted individuals to venture into oat milling companies. In 1877, one such company formally registered Quaker Oats as the inaugural trademark for a breakfast cereal, establishing the brand's identity. While the Quakers, known for their commitment to peace have no direct ties to the company. The choice of the Quaker name and mascot embodies qualities of honesty, integrity, purity, and strength. Early advertisements featured the Quaker Oats guy proudly holding a scroll inscribed with the word pure. Thirteen years later, the company merged with six other oat millers, forming the American Cereal Company, eventually rebranded as the Quaker Oats Company in 1901. By 1950, the iconic cylindrical container became synonymous with their oatmeal products, marking a significant milestone. Beyond Oats, Quaker Oats diversified into consumer food brands with the acquisition of Aunt Jemima Pancake Mix in 1925, marking a pivotal venture beyond their oat-focused origins. Continuing with Quaker Oats' diverse ventures, let's delve into Aunt Jemima Syrup, a jewel in their product lineup introduced in the 1960s. Many consider it their standout offering, boasting a flavor profile that resonates with enthusiasts. However, the brand faced a significant transformation in 2020 when the name Aunt Jemima was retired due to its racially insensitive connotations. Rising from its predecessor's legacy, the brand emerged as Pearl Milling Company, continuing to grace breakfast tables with its iconic syrup. Shifting gears to breakfast cereals, Quaker Oats showcased prowess with hits like Captain Crunch and Live Cereal, unveiled in the early 1960s. Live Cereal, in particular, found fame through a memorable advertising campaign featuring a picky eater named Mikey. The catchphrase, Mikey likes it, became synonymous with the cereal's appeal, marking a success decade for life. In the 1980s, Quaker Oats diversified further by introducing chewy granola bars and acquiring the company behind Rice Aroni, the San Francisco treat. This period marked a strategic expansion into snack bars and savory offerings, adding another layer to their culinary influence. Upon the other hand, Quaker Oats ran a chemical division for over 60 years, established in the 1920s to produce furferol, a versatile chemical derived from oat hulls. Thriving post-World War II, this division faced challenges in the 1970s with emerging substitutes leading to its eventual sale in the 1980s. Despite this chapter in their history, few associate Quaker Oats with chemicals today. Pet food emerges as another surprising but common foray for food companies, and Quaker Oats embrace it wholeheartedly. Their initial foray during World War II with Ken L. Ration marked the beginning of a significant presence in the pet food market. By 1997, Quaker Oats commanded over $1 billion in annual pet food sales, holding a substantial 17% share of the U.S. dried dog food market. The strategic sale of their European and U.S. pet food operations, coupled with a deal with Heinz, further solidified their position in this evolving market. Heinz, already wielding the Nine Lives cat food brand, emerged as a key player in this strategic maneuver, reinforcing their footprint in the pet food industry. Now, on to another intriguing facet of Quaker Oats' diverse portfolio, retail chains. In a strategic move in 1981, 
Quaker Oats made a bold entrance into the retail industry, acquiring substantial players to broaden their scope. Joseph A. Bank, known for crafting clothes in their manufacturing facilities and retailing them in 11 stores, became a notable addition. Purchased for $20 million, Quaker Oats steered the chain's growth to over 30 stores in just five years, ultimately selling it for a five-fold return on investment. A parallel narrative unfolded with Brookstone, a company specializing in specialty tools through mail-order catalogs and seven physical locations. Operated under Quaker Oats for five years, Brookstone underwent a strategic sale. Similarly, a chain of 27 optical stores acquired in 1981 witnessed a five-year stint under Quaker Oats before being divested. The varied sales aimed at reducing debt and honing focus on their core food operations. Restaurants also found a place in Quaker Oats' diverse ventures. A notable venture was the acquisition of Magic Pan, a creep specialized restaurant that originated in San Francisco. Under Quaker Oats' ownership, the chain expanded impressively to over 100 locations. While the 1970s witnessed its ascent, sales dwindled in the 1980s, prompting Quaker Oats to sell the chain, which eventually closed in the 1990s. The fact remains Quaker Oats transformed a creep restaurant into a widespread phenomenon with over 100 locations, a testament to their versatile business pursuits. Toys emerged as an unexpected yet fascinating category for Quaker Oats in 1969, marked by the acquisition of fish Prize, a renowned toy company specializing in products for younger children. Notably, the Chatter Telephone stands out as a personal favorite, despite Fisher Price's relatively modest sales of $30 million a year at the time of acquisition. Quaker Oats played a pivotal role in elevating their brand's prominence. Over two decades, they nurtured Fisher Price into a behemoth with sales approaching $800 million. A subsequent spin off in its own publicly traded company preceded Fisher Price's acquisition by the giant toy maker Mattel where they have thrived ever since marking another chapter in Quaker Oats' unexpected foray into the world of toys. In the dynamic landscape of Quaker Oats' acquisitions, a smaller but notable endeavor unfolded in the 1970s. In the midst of an aggressive acquisition strategy, they acquired Louis Marx's toys for $54 million. Despite the anticipation of synergies with Fisher Price, this venture proved challenging, leading to the eventual sale of the company after a brief four-year period attributed to lower-than-expected sales. Now, shifting focus to the final chapter in Quaker Oats' diverse portfolio, beverages. By the 1990s, beverages emerged as their most substantial category, surpassing oatmeal and all previously discussed ventures. This category, marked by its peculiarity, primarily centers around two distinct brands, one of them being the pinnacle of success and the other arguably the least successful. In 1983, Quaker Oats strategically acquired Stokely Van Camp, owners of Gatorade, transforming it into a global sports drink giant. Gatorade's success, accounting for 40% of Quaker Oats' total sales by 2000, showcases the company's impactful role in the beverage industry. On the flip side, Quaker Oats' 1994 venture into Snapple, with a $1.7 billion acquisition, became one of their least successful endeavors. Shifts from convenience stores to less favorably grocery shelves and intensified competition led to a $1.4 billion loss in just three years. Years. Amidst this transformation, Snapple's market share plummeted from an impressive 40% to a mere 15% within a few short years. Even marketing struggled. The iconic Snapple lady was sidelined for less memorable campaigns. In a stark turn of events, Quaker Oats sold Snapple in 1997 for $300 million, marking a staggering $1.4 billion loss over a brief three-year period. Clearly, the Snapple episode stood in stark contrast to the resounding success Quaker Oats experienced with Gator. In conclusion, Quaker Oats, often perceived as synonymous with Oats alone, unveils a century-long story of diverse ventures, from retail chains to toy companies. Their multifaceted journey extends far beyond the realm of Oats. The company's $13 billion valuation to PepsiCo, predominantly fueled by Gatorade, underscores their strategic prowess as the non-carbonated beverage category surged. Quaker Oats played a pivotal role, propelling Pepsi to a commanding 33% market share. Thanks for joining us on this captivating journey through the stories that shape our world. Your support keeps the Bullet Society thriving. Subscribe and ring the notification bell to never miss a captivating story. More incredible stories and interviews are coming your way. Stay tuned for what's next on the Bullish Society.